Lateral movement of the mandible. The lateral movement of the mandible occurs when the jaw moves either to the right or the left side away from the mid-sagittal plane. So to get a better understanding of it, let's first recap the sagittal plane. Sagittal plane is the vertical plane that divides the face into right and left halves. Sagittal axis is an anterior posterior axis, an imaginary axis which runs along the mid-sagittal plane. The mandible shows slight rotation around the axis. Mandibular movement around the sagittal axis occurs when one condyle moves inferiorly while the other remains in the terminal hinge position. During the movement, the condyle on one side moves downward and medially along the slope of the entoglenoid process, which is the medial slope of the glenoid fossa, and the condyle of the opposite side moves upward and laterally. The vertical axis runs through the condyle and the posterior border of the ramus of the mandible. The mandible rotates around this vertical axis during lateral movements. Mandibular movement around the vertical axis, which is the frontal axis, occurs when one condyle moves anteriorly out of terminal hinge position with the vertical axis of opposite condyle remaining in the terminal hinge position. If the patient moves his mandible towards the right, the vertical axis of rotation will pass through the right condyle and vice versa. Lateral rotation of the mandible or lateral movement of the mandible is said to occur when the mandible moves away from the mid-sagittal plane. These movements can occur on the right or the left side. So a basic concept which should be understood regarding lateral movements is that when the mandible moves laterally, the condyles on both sides do not share the same path of movement. So consider the mandible is moving towards the left side. So on the side of the working condyle, so in this case it is the left condyle, it exhibits rotation movement. Whereas the right condyle, which is the non-working condyle, exhibits a shift towards forward, medial and downward direction. Thus the non-working condyle moves along an arc and this arc is determined by the entoglenoid process of the glenoid fossa. So in this image, the left condyle is the working condyle because the mandible is moving towards the left. So the left condyle exhibits rotation and it is termed as rotating, working or latrotrusive condyle. And the right condyle, which is the non-working condyle, is also known as the orbiting condyle or the mediotrusive condyle. It has also been termed as balancing condyle, but the term is quite controversial, so we shall omit that for the time being. So now let's take a closer look at the working condyle. The working side is limited by the temporomandibular ligament, and this temporomandibular ligament has an oblique portion and an inner portion. The oblique portion influences the normal opening movement of the mandible, whereas the inner portion prevents lateral pterygoid muscles from overextension. So due to the action of temporomandibular ligament, the working side can take only five different paths. Lateral trusion, that is, the working mandible moves laterally outward. Lateral sertrusion, that is, the working mandible moves laterally and upwards. Lateral detrusion is the opposite, wherein the mandible moves laterally and downwards. Lateral protrusion, that is the mandible, the working mandible moves laterally and forward. Whereas lateral retrusion, wherein the working mandible moves laterally and backward. So this is a two-dimensional image. So uh, here are the arrows, if it is confusing to you, just imagine them in a three-dimensional plane. We are viewing this mandible from the sagittal side, that is from the uh, left side, okay. So the left condyle is right in front of us. So protrusion would be just ahead, it will move, the jaw will move outward. So the condyle would be in lateral protrusion. Lateral detrusion, it's moving down. Lateral sertrusion, it's moving up. Lateral retrusion, it's moving back. And lateral trusion, that is if, and lateral trusion, that is if we are viewing the mandible from the left side and left condyle is working, so it is moving towards you. I hope you have understood these arrows. The mesial arrow is just for reference. Lateral movements usually take place while chewing food 
it is important as they influence the intercuspation of the teeth during mastication okay so we saw that during lateral movement of the mandible both the condyles do not share the same path the working condyle moves laterally and upward whereas the non-working condyle moves downward medially and forward so why does this difference in the movement of the condyle occur this is related to the presence of the endoglenoid process of the glenoid fossa so in this image here you can see the red dotted line is the endoglenoid process of the glenoid fossa it is in the form of an arc so the non-working condyle moves along an arc which is determined by the endoglenoid process of the glenoid fossa now let's take a closer look at the non-working condyle so here you can see that in case of a left lateral movement the left condyle is at centric relation position and it is just rotating whereas the non-working condyle which in this case is the right condyle is translating now what is the meaning of translation translation is defined as a movement in which every point of the moving object has simultaneously the same velocity and direction so that means that the condyle the right condyle is moving en masse it is moving as whole the left condyle is just rotating in its position whereas the right condyle is moving as a whole so this is termed as lateral translation this bodily lateral movement or the lateral shift of the mandible which results from the movement of the condyles along the lateral inclines along the mandibular fossae in lateral jaw movement is termed as Bennett movement after Dr. Norman Godfrey Bennett who initially studied the working condylar path in 1908 and called it Bennett movement which is now referred to as lateral intrusion. Bennett showed that working condyle moves outwards and non-working condyle moves inwards. McCollum considered it the most important determinant of occlusion. During lateral movement, the mandible shifts as a whole, that is, in this case, in the left lateral movement, the right condyle shifts as a whole by about 1 to 4 millimeters towards the working side, and this shift is called Bennett movement. The Bennett shift occurs either before or along with lateral intrusion. The Bennett movement is recorded with a pantograph and the movement is regulated by the anatomical configuration of the glenoid fossa, slackness of capsular ligaments and the contraction of medial pterygoid on the non-working side. So now let's take a closer look at the orbiting condyle to try and understand its movement. Based on the timing of the shift in relation to the forward movement of the non-working condyle, Bennett's side shift has two components, immediate lateral translation and progressive lateral translation. So immediate lateral translation occurs when the non-working condyle moves from centric relation straight inward or medially. So here in this image you can see the non-working condyle is moving inward, that is towards the medial side. This movement occurs in 86% of the condyles studied and its value ranges from 1 to rarely 4 millimeters with an average being 0.75 millimeters in dimension. Progressive lateral translation is the translatory portion of the lateral movement that occurs at a rate proportional to the forward movement of the non-working condyle. Its value ranges from 2 to 3 millimeters. Now this progressive lateral translation occurs in two phases recurrent side shift and progressive side shift. Recurrent side shift, the major quotient that is about 75% of lateral translation occurs during the first 2 to 3 millimeters of forward movement of the non-working condyle, whereas progressive side shift or Bennett side shift is the lateral translation that continues laterally after 2 to 3 millimeters of forward movement of the non-working condyle. Frequent side shift occurs in a rapid fashion whereas progressive side shift occurs in a gradual fashion and does not change with time. If the major quotient of the Bennett movement occurs during the first 4 millimeters of anterior movement of the non-working condyle, then it is termed as distributed side shift. In some cases, the recurrent and the precurrent and progressive translation are both included as progressive lateral translation, so don't get confused in that. So now let's move on to Bennett angle. 
Pennet angle is the angle formed by the sagittal plane and the path of the advancing condyle during lateral mandibular movements as viewed in the horizontal plane. So it is the angle formed between the path of the non-working condyle and the sagittal plane. In this case, you should keep in mind that the angle is formed only between the progressive lateral path and the sagittal plane. Studies have shown that variations in the direction of progressive lateral translation or Bennett angle is about 7.5 to 12.8 degrees. Pennet angle is used in articulators with immediate lateral translation cap capability such as a Hanau articulator. So in this image, the black line indicates the progressive lateral path taken by the non-working condyle and the gray dotted line is the sagittal plane. So the angle between these two is the Bennett angle. The next angle that we're going to talk about is Fisher's angle. It is the angle formed between the sagittal protrusive condylar path and the sagittal lateral condylar path having a mean value of 5 degrees. So in this image, the gray dotted line indicate the sagittal protrusive condylar path and the black dotted line indicate the sagittal lateral condylar path. Sagittal lateral condylar path is when the orbit of the center of the non-working condyle is traced on the sagittal plane. It is usually longer and steeper than the sagittal protrusive condylar path. So now let's take a look at the lateral border movements. When the condyles are in the centric relation position, from there if we consider a left lateral border movement, so the left condyle is still in centric relation, so that will be a left lateral border movement and left condyle is the rotating condyle whereas right condyle is the orbiting condyle because it is orbiting the left condyle. Now with the mandible in the left lateral border position there is contraction of the left, in left inferior lateral pterygoid along with continued contraction of the right inferior lateral pterygoid and this will cause the left condyle to move anteriorly to the right. This will cause a shift in the mandibular midline back to coincide with the midline of the face. This then initiates the right lateral border movement wherein the mandible comes back to the centric relation and the right lateral border movement initiates. So now the left condyle is the orbiting condyle because it is orbiting around the frontal axis of the right condyle and the right condyle is the rotating condyle because the mandible is rotating around it. So it is a right lateral border movement. With the mandible in the right lateral border position, contraction of the right inferior lateral pterygoid along with continued contraction of left inferior lateral pterygoid will cause the right condyle to move anteriorly to the rest, to the left and the mandible moves back to its centric relation position. So the lateral movements can be generated by varying levels of mandibular opening. With each increasing degree of opening, smaller tracings will result. So this wraps up this presentation on the lateral movement of mandible. We discussed about the movement of the mandible, the lateral movement of the mandible wherein the working condyle exhibits rotation and the non-working condyle exhibits Bennett movement. We also talked about Bennett shift, Bennett angle and Fisher's angle. I hope you have liked this presentation. To read about other types of mandibular movements, you can go through the previous presentations. Please do like, share, comment and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.